Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve an example related to the transformation of plane stresses by graphical way that means by using the Mohr circle. So this is the statement of the problem. The statement is same as that we have solved for the analytical method but the same problem will now be solved with the help of graphical method. So in this example we have been given with the, a current state where the normal and shear stresses are acting. In first part, we are being asked to calculate the normal and shear stress on a plane when this element will be rotated by an angle of 20 degree counterclockwise. In the second part, it is being asked to calculate the major and minor principal stresses. In the last part, it is being asked to calculate the maximum in plane shear stresses. So let's solve this problem. Let's first draw the Mohr circle. So to draw the Mohr circle, first we need to have the points. So that will be taken from the X and Y plane. So on X plane, the normal stress which is acting is 250. So 250 and shear stress which is acting is 100 MPa but counterclockwise, so negative. So for the Y plane, we can see that the normal stress acting is 100 MPa and shear stress acting is 100 MPa again but clockwise so positive 100 so this is the state on the y plane now we can have two points on this plane of normal and shear stress so first point let's say the first point is over here where we can say that normal stress is 250 and uh, shear stress is negative 100 that makes sense that uh, 250 is on the positive side of this FCS of and this negative is at the downward side of this ordinate of shear stress similarly we can have the second point on this normal and shear stress plane so let's say that this is the second plane coordinates are 100 and 100 now the next thing that we are going to do is joining these points together so on joining these points, we will have the diameter of the motor circle and the point where this line is crossing this normal stress axis. So this will be the center of the motor circle. Now we can easily draw the motor circle. This will be the motor circle then. So in first part of this problem, we are being asked to calculate the normal and shear stress on a plane which is being rotated counterclockwise by a magnitude of 20 degree. So on more circle, this will be then doubled if it is 20, then on more circle, it will be 40 degree. So this diameter of the more circle will be rotated by a magnitude of 40 degree, where we will be having this line as the new diameter of the more circle. And this will be representing the X dash plane and this point will be representing the Y dash plane. Now our task is to determine the normal stress on X dash plane, also on Y dash plane and also the shear stress on X dash Y dash plane. So coordinate of these points X dash point and Y dash points are unknown and we have to find out. Before that we can uh, have the basic calculation in Mohr circle so that we can determine these unknowns. Basic calculation involves the distance of the center of the Mohr circle from the origin along the normal stress. So this can be determined, this distance I am talking about. So this can be represented with sigma bar. So sigma bar is usually being calculated as the average of normal stress acting on x direction and normal stress acting on y direction. So it means 250 plus 100 divided by 2. So this will give us 175 MPa. The formula of sigma bar makes sense that let's say if the, the two lines are starting from uh, this line. Let's say one line is starting and uh, ending over here. There is another line which is starting from here and ending over here. Let's say this line represents sigma x and this represents sigma y and the center is in between these two points. This is the case here. So this distance, the in between distance then obviously being calculated as the average of these two sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. That's what it is over here. So this is how we have the formula of sigma bar. So sigma x dash is required which is actually the distance up to this point 
So we know the distance up to the center of the circle, but this remaining distance can be determined by considering this right angle triangle. So in this right angle triangle, this will be the R value, the radius. So if we can know this angle, then we can have the right angle triangle where this side is to be determined using the radius of the circle and the angle. So we can determine the angle considering this right angle triangle, the right angle triangle of the given values. So let me draw on uh, this side so that it makes sense to all of you. So this is the right angle triangle where this will be the angle where this will be R. This distance will be tau xy which is 100 and uh, this distance, the distance from uh, center up to this point can be determined because we know the total distance distance up to this given point which is actually sigma x and that is 250 so subtracting tau bar from this 250 we will be having this distance as 75 mpa so in this right angle triangle we have this as 75 this as 100 so then radius can be calculated by using the Pythagoras theorem 75 spire 100 spire so then radius would be equal to 125 MPA and also we can determine theta because perpendicular and base are known so when you do the calculations theta will be 53.13 degrees so total angle in this right angle triangle is 53.13 one three so this remaining angle would be 53.13 minus 40 it means this angle would be then 13.13 degree so we have a right angle triangle obviously this is not according to scale where the angle is 13.13 degree where this distance was required and we just have calculated the radius which is 125 mpa now using then cos theta formula which is cos 13.13 equal to this uh, required value divided by 125. So on doing calculation the base of this right angle triangle would be 121.73. Now we can have the sigma x dash. So sigma x dash now would be equal to the addition of sigma bar plus this required distance. So sigma bar plus this required distance adding them together we just have calculated the required value so 175 plus 131.73 will give us sigma x dash as 296.73 mpa so this sigma y bar can be calculated again if you consider this uh, right angle triangle so this will be same distance as that of this question sign so then this distance or you can say sigma y bar can be calculated by subtracting this required value from sigma bar. So sigma y dash would be equal to sigma bar minus this question sign. So 175 minus 121.73 will give us sigma y dash as 53.27 MPA. So we have got sigma x dash which is 296.73 but still tau x dash y dash is required. So we just have calculated the sigma y dash which is 53.27. Now the tau x dash y dash is yet to be determined. So tau x dash y dash is actually this distance again that can be determined using this right angle triangle where this perpendicular side is actually tau x dash y dash so using this right angle triangle where we would be using perpendicular hypotenuse and the angle so so then using sine theta which is sine 13.13 equal to perpendicular which is tau x dash y dash divided by 125 so on doing the calculations we are having the tau x dash y dash as 28.395 mpa so we have got tau x dash y dash which is minus 28.395 this will be positive 28.395 
So ultimately we become successful in determining the state of stress at a plane which is rotated by a magnitude of 20 degree counterclockwise. So if you recall this results that we have got from this graphical method, the normal stress and shear stress on this x dash plane and normal stress and shear stress on y dash plane. So this, so this result is actually the same that we have got from the analytical method. You can refer to my previous video where we have solved the same example using the analytical method where we have got these same values. Now let's move on for the part 2 where we are being asked to calculate the principal stresses and the location of the principal plane. So this is what we know up till now. We know the y bar value which is 175 MPa. We know the radius of this Mohr circle which is 125 MPa. Now we are being asked to calculate the principal stresses. The major principal stress would be here and the minor principal stress would be here. These are the points where we are going to have the zero shear stress. So this will be sigma 1 major principal stress and this will be sigma 2 the minor principal stress. So major principal stress can easily be calculated if you add the sigma bar with this distance which is actually the radius. So sigma bar plus radius will give you the major principal stress. So 175 plus 125 will give you 300 MPa. And similarly minor principal stress can be calculated as sigma bar minus radius because uh, this distance is um, radius. So subtracting radius we are going to have 50 MPa. So major principal stress is 300 MPa and minor principal stress is 50 MPa. How about the direction of the principal plane? So the direction of the principal plane would be half of this angle 53.13 divided by 2 because on Mohr circle we have 2 times theta. So on actual it will be half of this angle which is on Mohr circle. So this angle would then be 26.56 degrees. This is the direction of major principal stress. How about the direction of the minor principal stress? So the direction would be this one. It means on Mohr circle it is 53.13 plus 180 because this will be 180. So dividing this by 2 to have the value in actual. So then we will be having 116.56 degrees in actual. So if you again recall the previous video where we have solved the same example using analytical method where we have got the same major principal and minor principal stress as 350 MPa and also the direction as 26.56 degree and 116.56 degrees. Now in the last part of this example where we are being asked to calculate the maximum shear stress. So looking at the circle where we can find that maximum shear stress would be at this point on the upper side or the positive side and maximum shear stress at the downward side would be this part exactly perpendicular to this normal stress line. And if you want to know the magnitude of this magnitude of this maximum shear stress will be equal to the radius of this per circuit. The distance from center up to the exterior point on the circuit that is actually the radius. Same at the top and at the bottom. So it means maximum shear stress is actually equal to the radius of this Mohr circle and that is 125 MPa. How about the direction of the plane where we are having the maximum shear stress? means this angle if you are talking about. So if this angle is 53.13 the total angle is 90. So 90 minus 53.13 degrees will give you the angle on Mohr circle. So the angle on Mohr circle would be 86.87 degrees and on actual it will be half of this and that will be around 18.43 degrees. Since this angle is clockwise so this angle would be negative then. And if you recall the previous video where we have solved it by analytical we have got the same angle, same maximum shear. So this is how the calculation of transformation of plane stresses is done on Mohr circle. And this is all from this video. Thank you for watching this video.